Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be on the topic of what I eat in a day because I've had so many of you ask what I eat in a day and how often I eat. So I thought it was just probably a lot easier to just put it all into one video so you have all the information there and hopefully I can answer everybody's questions in one video. I will show you exactly what I eat in a day and when I eat. That will come later on in the video. But first of all, I just want to discuss a few things with you that I found when I started the carnivore diet myself. I just want to quickly take the opportunity to say thank you as well for my last video. I was completely overwhelmed at how many people saw that and how many people it reached, which was the goal. So that's brilliant. And also, if you did send me an email, I have read it, but I haven't had a chance to get back to everybody's yet because, again, I was just so overwhelmed with emails. I wasn't expecting to get as many as I did. And so many of you reached out to me and emailed me. So please bear with me. I have read your email, but I am just working through the list now and replying. So thank you for being patient. So I think it's really important to note that when you first start the carnivore diet, your appetite could be completely different to where it might end up. So for me, when I first started the carnival diet, I was super, super hungry. And I think that was just where I was on a low fat diet before. And then I have transitioned to this meat and fat all of a sudden. And my body is just going, yes, please feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me. So I just couldn't get enough um, in the beginning and especially fat. My body really wanted fat. So in the beginning, I was eating a lot and I think that there are other people that have been the opposite to me. So, for example, Kerry from Homestead How. I'm sure if you are following the carnival diet, you are aware of Kerry. Um, but I think he was opposite to me because he wasn't very hungry in the beginning. Um, but I do put that down to me being severely underweight and needing to gain back to a healthy weight. Whereas Kerry was overweight and needed to lose weight to go back to a healthy weight. So I'm just wondering, and from what I've researched, I think that my body needed the food and needed the fat for energy because I didn't actually have any stored on me as fat. Whereas people who are overweight already have that fat stored on their body. So their body will use that first and they will only then need to take in the fat and the food that it needs for the extra energy but I think it the main priority for your body to start with is to use the fat that is already stored on your body so I think this is where we are all so different. Now I started and I ate three meals a day in the beginning that is because I was transitioning from a diet where I was used to having breakfast, lunch, dinner and snacks as well. And the thought of going to two meals a day or one meal a day for me was just something extra that I really didn't want to worry about. So I continued with my three meals a day. I didn't actually need to snack because I was so full, I suppose, from the protein and fat that I was eating in my meals. But I did need my three meals a day. I remember in the beginning being very worried about having the three meals a day because I was watching people on YouTube and they were all saying how they only eat twice or how they eat, only eat once some of them, some of them were doing OMAD. And I was thinking, well, I'm on three meals a day and I can't ever see me transitioning to two meals, let alone one meal. So I was quite worried about that. And I did reach out to a few people and ask for advice and everybody said, just do not worry. It will all come naturally in its own time. And that's exactly what it did do. To start with, I was just having smaller meals three times a day. So my breakfast would have consisted of something like two lamb chops or one steak or a couple of burger patties. And then I would have the same for lunch and a similar amount again for my dinner. So I was having three small meals a day. As time went on and my body began to get used to the carnivore diet, I noticed that I could start eating a lot more in one sitting. So my breakfast then doubled and I was having two, sometimes even three steaks for a meal. And I would find that I could actually go seven or eight hours before I felt hungry again. And then I would eat my dinner and again, I could eat the same amount again. So I naturally just transitioned into two meals a day just by gradually increasing what I ate in one meal. Now, 
how I go about it is I just do a Dr. Ken Berry and I eat when I'm hungry and I eat until I'm full. So I always go by the rule of thinking whether I fancy a steak as to whether I'm hungry or not. So if I think I'm hungry, I will say to myself, could I eat a juicy ribeye steak right now? If the answer is yes, I know I am definitely hungry. And if the answer is no, then I know that I'm not actually hungry. Because if you're not hungry for meat, you are not actually hungry. You can't use any other food to determine whether you're hungry because well, for me personally anyway, if you asked me any time of the day, could I eat a donut? The answer would be yes, whether I was full up or not. So you can't use anything else other than meat. If you fancy meat and you fancy fat, then you are definitely hungry. And if the answer is no, that you don't fancy that, then you really are not hungry. So by going from that rule, I would eat my breakfast in the morning, have, like I said, two or three steaks and then I would just go throughout my day and if I thought oh I think I might be hungry now do I fancy a steak yes I'm definitely hungry but I found that as time went on that it was seven or eight hours since my breakfast before I actually even want my dinner so I could only naturally fit in my two meals a day anyway so I completely naturally transitioned to two meals a day so for me and my advice for everybody else is in the beginning you might want to start off what you're used to but don't worry about it because you really, really do just naturally fall into your own eating pattern. And now that's exactly what I do. I eat twice a day still and I have fallen into the 16-8 intermittent fasting. My eating window is between 9 and 5 every day. I never eat outside of those hours simply because I'm just not hungry. Another thing I became aware of is... As I said in the beginning, I was eating a lot and I actually pushed some of my meals up to about three ribeye steaks and that was just one meal so I would be having sometimes six ribeyes a day which is a lot of food. I think my body initially needed all that food for healing and that's why I was so hungry. But again, further on down the line, a few months in, I suddenly noticed that I couldn't actually eat so much anymore. And I would have three ribeyes on my plate and I would eat two of them and think, oh my God, I'm so full. I can't eat any more. How on earth did I ever eat three ribeyes? I just don't know. So my appetite just naturally dropped. And I think because my body had done main of the healing with the high amount of food that my appetite just naturally dropped down a little bit lower, which was nice because it wasn't quite so expensive then. So now I eat a lot less than what I did in the beginning, but I have heard this a few times um, through other people that sometimes in the beginning they are super, super hungry and your body might need all that food for healing. But other times people start off and they're not hungry at all and they actually get hungrier. And that's what happened to Kerry from Homestead Howe. He got a few months in and then realised he was doing OMAD, one meal a day, and then he realised that that wasn't enough for him and he started to feel hungry and his body wanted more food. Now, he put it down to because he'd lost all of his weight from his body, all the fat from his body, that now he needed the food as a source of energy for his body to burn, which makes complete sense. So I'm sure that that's why it happens. Lots of people have also asked whether I eat grass fed meat or whether I eat store bought meat. And the answer to that is both. So we have a farm and occasionally we have a beef animal in the freezer. At the moment, we don't have a beef animal in the freezer. There'll be one coming shortly in the next couple of months. When we don't have one in the freezer. I just get my meat from the supermarket and I actually buy the cheapest meat going. I do always make sure that I buy Red Tractor Assured so that I know that the animals are farmed to a high standard. That is just the one thing that I make sure that I do get. But other than that, I buy the cheapest meat. And in the beginning, we didn't have a beef animal in the freezer and I actually healed on the cheapest meat. So my advice there would be, again, to follow Dr. Ken Berry. By the way, if you haven't checked him out, check him out because he has got some wonderful information on the carnival diet. He will be such a help to you. If you follow his advice he will tell you to eat the best you can afford so if you can only afford the cheap supermarket meat that's great go and get that i healed on it and i'm sure you can too 
If you can afford the grass-fed, grass-finished meat from your butchers, that's also great, go and buy that. But don't stress yourself out on buying best quality, most expensive meat because you just simply don't need to do it. Also buy bacon that has no nitrates only because I don't want any of that nasty rubbish in my food. So I make sure that I just buy the bacon that is purely pork, water and salt. That is the only ingredients in there. It is a little bit harder to find, but if you do some research on the internet or look in your local shops, you will find it somewhere make sure that when I'm buying my meat that it it is just meat only and doesn't have any other crap added to it which we do not want to be putting into our bodies. So organs are another hot topic on the carnivore diet. Should I incorporate organs or should I not? I personally love the taste of liver and I always have done so I decided that in the beginning I was going to add liver into my carnivore diet and if you've done your research you will know that you can't eat too much liver because it has such high amounts of vitamin A and you do not want vitamin A toxicity. So I was just having a tiny weeny amount and when I say a tiny amount probably about 25 grams of liver every other day and just fry it up in the pan and just eat that alongside of my meal. And as the weeks went on again I gradually dropped that and then I was just having a little piece on a Sunday. And I actually got a few months in and I suddenly didn't like the taste of liver anymore. And I thought, well, this is this is funny because I absolutely love liver. And I would just look at it and I would think, oh, no, can't eat it. I do, I do not want that. So I stopped eating it for a while. I would listen to my body and just stop eating it, which I did. I thought there's no point in forcing it down when my body is physically telling me not to eat it and just recently I was going into my freezer to get some meat out and I found a bit of liver at the bottom and I looked at it and I thought thought of liver just sounded delicious to me so I thought that was my body's way of telling me that I perhaps needed it again so I've just added it back in so that's the beauty with the carnivore diet is you can for once listen to your body and listen to your body's needs. I've never had that ability before. Before I would just be snacking all day so I would ignore my hunger hormone. I think it completely messes your hunger hormones up because I never actually knew what it felt like to be hungry. I never was hungry because I would just snack all day and I was just masking that. And now on the carnivore diet I actually allow myself to get hungry. I know what hungry feels like and I know for once what my body wants my body will simply tell me if the thought of liver is repulsive it doesn't want that don't feed it liver if the thought of liver suddenly sounds delicious eat it because your body is telling you it needs it and it wants to eat that so it's just so simple to follow what your body wants when you actually listen to it and when you are feeding it the proper human diet you can listen to all these signals and it is just a wonderful thing. I do the same with salt so I salt all my food to taste again Dr Ken Berry's recommendation just salt to taste don't be afraid of salt our body actually needs salt so I salt all of my food and I salt quite heavily as well and if I'm eating my food and I feel like it was too salty next time I'll put less on and if I feel like I need more I will just add more and I will just salt all of my food to taste again I'm just purely listening to my body it is that simple another question I keep getting asked is what do I drink on a carnivore diet well the answer to that is water so every single day I just drink water I recently had a reverse osmosis water filter system fitted to my sink so the water I drink is filtered and had all the nasty crap removed from the water so I'm not drinking any heavy metals or any antibiotics or any nasties in my water. I will occasionally have sparkling water as well if I'm feeling a little bit fancy. I might have a sparkling water but I don't drink that too often. So it's predominantly just water. I used to be a massive tea drinker. I think in the UK drinking tea is just something we are associated with. And I used to be a big tea drinker and I would drink tea all day, every day. 
So I had to come off of that because I have a huge problem with oxalates and black tea is super high in oxalates. So that was no good to me. I came off of that. One thing I do is if I'm out with friends or if I'm out socially, I will allow myself a coffee. So I will just have a latte, which is coffee with milk. And on average, I probably would say that I have about four to eight a month and eight would be a lot. So I would say more around the four coffees a month mark. But I do just like to keep that in and have that occasionally just so that if I am out, I'm not sat there without a drink. I can actually join in and be social. And that is just what I use as my little treat. Another question I get asked is, do I weigh my meat before I cook it or do I weigh it when it's cooked? And the answer to that is I don't really weigh it, to be honest. I just have a look at what I've got. If I've got some ribeyes, I think, oh, I could probably eat two of those. I will just cook two. I don't weigh how much they are. I don't count any macros. I don't count any calories. I don't count fat grams. I don't count protein grams. I purely just listen to my body and eat what I feel like I need to. Your body is very good at telling you when you've had enough fat. I know if I've had enough fat because I simply don't want to eat anymore. And I know when I've had enough food. So for me, it's just quite simple. And if I've cooked two ribeyes and I don't quite want all of those, I will eat one and a half and just put half back in the fridge later. It really is that simple just to eat when you are hungry, eat until you are completely full, wait till you're hungry again, eat again. And it's just that simple. And same with water. I do not force myself to drink a certain amount of water every single day. I used to do that. I used to think we needed two to three litres a day. So I would carry a bottle around with me all day and sip on it and just force myself to drink all this water. But now, since I've been doing carnival diet, I listen to my body and I drink when I'm thirsty and I will stop when I feel like I have quenched my thirst. So it's, it's really that simple. If you just listen to your body, your body will tell you exactly what it needs. And it's actually quite a wonderful feeling and such an easy way of life probably the most simple diet you could ever do. Anyway, I think that I've answered all your questions that everybody had put down in the comments on what I eat in a day. If I haven't and you do have another question, please just pop it in the comments down below and I will try to answer you. My next video is going to be on transition symptoms because I've also had a lot of you asking if I had transition symptoms and if so, what they were, how long they lasted and all things like that. So my next video will be on that. So let's go and I will show you exactly what I eat in a day. It's now half past nine in the morning and that's when I usually have my first meal as that's when I first feel hungry. So I'm just about to cook my breakfast. I will show you exactly what I have and what I do. So for my breakfast this morning, I'm going to have some minced beef, which I have got here, which is bought from the supermarket and it is 25% fat. And that is the cheapest that I can find and it costs just £2.29 um, per packet. I will have that with some bacon and as you can see the bacon is made without nitrates because I don't want any of that nasty stuff in my food. So the ingredients on this is literally just pork, water and salt. I'm going to have a fried egg as well. So with the mince. I literally just cut it up into squares as it is and pop it into the air fryer. So I just cut it up into, you can have it in any size that you like, but I like to have it in eight squares because it comes out a little bit more crispy then. Like so. And then I just take it out in its squares with some tongs and pop into the air fryer so i'll do that with all eight pieces so there we go and i just pop those into the air fryer and i cook those at a temperature of 200 for 16 minutes and turn them halfway through in the other side now, I'm just going to cook my bacon and I will have three or four slices of this, depending how hungry I am. This morning I'm going to eat three. 
There's my bacon slices going into the air fryer. Right, time to cook my egg now. So I want a nice big slab of butter, like that, into the pan. Right, once that's melted, I just fry my egg in there. Right, now that is cooked, I will pop it onto the plate with the rest of my food. So I have my mincer, my bacon, and then I'll pop the egg on the side and use all of that lovely butter to drizzle over the rest of the food. So there we have it. So that's a whole pack of mints, which is just over a pound of meat or 500 grams three bits of bacon and a fried egg. I always salt my food with Redmond sea salt. That is the most natural salt that I can find. And I add a nice, generous helping of salt. And I will usually add salt throughout the meal as well. I just salt to taste. So if I don't think it tastes salty enough, I'll add more. And that's breakfast done. Cheers. It's now 4.30 in the afternoon and I've just started to feel hungry, so let's cook some dinner. So for dinner tonight I'm going to have some lamb chops. They are thick butcher lamb chops. Look at the fat on those, they look lovely. I'm going to cook them in the air fryer. I'll probably end up having about four of these. But what I will do is I will cook them all up so I have some spare in case I'm not full after the four. Mm, yummy. So I will cook these at 200 degrees for 12 minutes and turn them halfway through. And here is my dinner cooked. So I've got four lamb chops there. I'm going to eat those and see how I get on. Oh, look at those. Lovely. chops but I couldn't eat any more because I struggled to get through those to be honest so the extra two that were cooked up they will be put in the fridge ready for tomorrow that is all I will eat now for this evening it is now five o'clock and I am done for the day I will not be able to eat anything else for the rest of the day so just two meals one was at half past nine and the other one was at half past four and that is me for the day thank you for watching and again like I said earlier if there are any questions, just pop them in the comments below. I'm hoping that I've covered everything that everybody has asked and my next video will be on my transition symptoms. So I'll see you then.